My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you a repair on an iPhone 11 Pro Max. This phone is completely dead. It's not showing any signs of life. My goal today is to walk you through the way that I diagnose and fix a phone like this. The most common repairs have already been attempted, like replacing the battery, checking the display, checking the components that lead to a phone turning on. None of those have solved it, so I'm assuming that there's going to be a short on the motherboard. So I'm going to take the motherboard out real quick. Let's get into the video. This iPhone 11 Pro Max isn't turning on. There's a quick way we can find out if it's a short or if it's another issue with the phone by simply plugging it into a power supply. Now, one of the things that we need to talk about is what is a short? You might've heard somebody say that the breaker shorted in a house, for example. Basically what that means is that the circuit was overloaded and the breaker that's designed to max out and flip has reached that point and so it's done so. And that's typically as simple as going and flipping the breaker back on. However, short is when a positive line connects to a ground plane. Now, an easy way to sum up electronics is tricking electricity to do what you want it to do by making it run around in circles, carrying along with it some ones and zeros. And every once in a while, you run into an issue where a single component, whether it's a capacitor or a component inside of an integrated circuit that has failed and has caused a short to ground. I think of it like this. I have kids, so if I tell one of my kids, clean your room and I'll give you a cookie. They'll go ahead and they'll clean their room. They'll do everything that they need to do and they'll get the cookie. Or I might have a kid that is naughty and finds the cookie jar and hides and eats all the cookies. Now the trick is gonna be finding the problematic child who's got the cookie jar that's draining all of the power. And that's basically what capacitor that has failed is like somewhere on the logic board there's a capacitor that's guarding that cookie jar that's basically saying all power come here because i'm attached to a ground plane and that's why a device fails to boot because all of the power that is being put into the phone is automatically going to that one spot and it won't boot so what i need to do is i basically have to play hide and seek for example in my house room by room you know i could do i could call it marco polo and maybe get a response. There are things that you can do like that analogy to isolate where the short is coming from. The first thing that I'm gonna do is hook up the motherboard to a power supply. This tells me right away that I have a short. Here I have my power supply set to 3.7, which is about where a battery is for this model. And here I have the battery and power button connector attached to the power supply. If we take it and we connect it up like so, and we go to hit output, we should, if there isn't an issue with the logic board, this would drop to zero. If, there's, if it's anything more than zero, we know that there's an issue with the motherboard. Here we go, one, two, three, boom. Definitely got a short. Now under a thermal camera, I can't really tell looking kind of at the back and front where the issue is, which means it's most likely something that's in between. It's either on the bottom of the top board or the bottom board, and I just can't see it with a thermal camera. So the next best thing is to split the boards and test it again. So let's do that. I'm gonna add some isopropyl alcohol here to these stickers to help loosen the adhesive. That way I can reuse them when the time comes. Just carefully peel them up and save them for later. And then let's flip it over. And here on the back, we've also got a, a sticker. It's a little heat sink graphite core, and then it pulls away. And we'll reinstall this one later as well. This, and this is where this comes into play. We've got our 11 Pro Max heat plate in there. In the settings, we're going to set it to the board of the 11 Pro Max. And we'll push the board on there, make sure it's nice and pushed down, and turn it on. Any tool that can fit there inside the, the layers to help lift is going to work. What I'll do is gently push it in here now that it's at temperature, and we're going to see if it wants to let go yet. The heat needs to basically pass through all the way through to the top board. And when it's ready, it'll let go. Looks like it's about to go. So I'll get tweezers. I'll pull the board away. 
and then we'll cool it down. Now this fan in here, just slide the board under there and that'll cool down the board as well. If you are finding this useful, like and subscribe for more future videos like this. All right, so this is cool enough to touch. What we'll do is we're gonna connect up the power supply again. And what this is gonna tell us when we hit power is, is the short in the top or is it in the bottom? So here we go, one, two, three. It drops down. And one of the things that we can do is we can actually take the display, let's connect it up. We'll turn on a power supply there. Our button and we'll hold down the power button and what we'll see is this jump around until it boots and we might see an apple logo here in a second there's the apple logo and there's the device on you can see that a, a working device just the top one so now we need to find out what's wrong with the bottom board. So I'm going to show you all of this. We're going to go through the process. We're going to see if I can find the short, find that problematic child and take the cookie jar away so that the rest of the phone can work. All right, we'll set continuity mode here. Red probe goes on ground. This little capacitor down here, I know that this side's the data line of ECC main. So let's touch it and we've got a short. So you can see this little cap here, this side's ground. This side's supposed to be the data line and we got a short. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to attach our little alligator clip here to a ground plane and we're gonna come in with a low voltage and touch that line and see what we get on the thermal camera. All right, so here we go. As you can see right there, we get a hot spot. So if we go over to ZXW and we look we test here and we're getting a short kind of in this area. Let's try it one more time, see if we can narrow it down. Right there. So now that I know the general area, something that we can do to really isolate it is either use some isopropyl alcohol or I've got a little bit of free spray left. So let's use that. All right, you can see it there again. Let's get this cold again. Try it one more time. And there you can see the issue down inside of there. One more time, just a quick tap. There, you can see the spot that it melted. Now we know what our problem is. It's amazing to think that something so small can cause the entire device to just stop working, but it happens all the time. So looking in this area, we had, this is the area that was getting hot and this is the only component, this little capacitor here that was getting hot. So let's go and pop that guy off. Now these were only a few different methods that can be used to find a short. One way or another, these boards had to come apart to find that short. There are a variety of thermal cameras that would work. There are a variety of other methods to detect the actual components that's failed. And given that it's a single capacitor, and this is a small one, we could replace it. The device most likely is gonna function without it. It's kind of like getting rid of one out of a thousand in an assembly line. It'll probably still flow it may not be as proficient but it will work and there it is that little guy that i've got stuck to my nail there you can see we pulled it off now we need to get rid of this condensation here so from here we're just going to add some isopropyl alcohol to the border and i've got a microfiber cloth here and i'm just going to use it to kind of wipe off the sides here getting rid of any of the old flux at the same time kind of absorbing any of the remaining moisture in there. Now, typically I would remove the thermal paste here, but given the clamping feature of this, I don't need to, because you used to get this kind of like teeter-totter effect. All right, so what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of flux around the border. 
And then I like to just kind of smear it, make sure it's not too crazy loaded with it. Just taking my time like that. And we'll flip this over and line it up. Get out our heat plate, get that all lined up. We'll take our clamps, set them down just like that, kind of pinching it in place. And I'm just gonna verify really carefully that everything's lined up perfectly before we turn it on. That's good, so we'll hit okay. Turn it on and we'll watch and we'll actually see it settle here in a little bit. I like to agitate the board just a little bit around the border. And you can see it kind of, you can see it kind of bubbling here with the flux. There's no spring back there, which means it's compressed. Here about 10 seconds, it'll have reached its maximum temperature, which means it'll start to automatically cool down. So now it's cold enough that we can take it off clamps. there and you can see just how tight that top board is no gap between it and the midboard no squeeze out nothing that's questionable so what we'll do is we'll set this back to three seven plug back in our tester grab our 11 pro max battery connector plug in the screen turn on our output hold down the power button all right, we'll boot it up. Now that we've got both layers back together, nothing's getting hot, that's good. And should come on here shortly. And there we go. That's basically how to do it. Now, obviously I still need to reinstall it and test everything, but that's how you troubleshoot quickly a short and fix it using a handful of tools that come in handy when running into an issue like this teeny tiny capacitor that killed the entire phone. That teeny tiny component that is on the tip of my finger is all that was causing this phone to be completely dead. Finding it wasn't too difficult, but having the general knowledge to find it definitely helped. Leave comments below if you have anything to add or if there's something that you'd like to see in a future video. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.